Hello and welcome to Feature Friday, a Lehigh School creative and performing arts series of radio plays featuring pieces on air from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Our students invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy some old times radio drama. Corrected everything I'd say. Vic? <sighs> what? Are you asleep? Yeah. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Can we talk for a minute? I'm very tired. Vic, I don't want to go to sleep mad. <laughs> what you mad about? Oh, I'm not mad, but you are. Me? Mad? <laughs> Laughable. My soul never was so much at peace. I've never was so serene. Fred don't mean to be so aggravating. Sadie, you'll kindly not mention that name to me again. I'm finished with Fred Stembottom. I play no more 500 with him. I brush no more elbows with him. He and I are quits. I know you feel bad about tonight. Who feels bad about tonight? I don't feel bad about anything. I feel Good. Tonight has taught me that a man can cherish a rattlesnake as a friend. A little and... lower, Vic. Huh? You'll wake Rush up talking so loud. Very well. I'll say no more. Let us sleep. I bid you good night. Good night. It's just his way. What's just whose way? It's just Fred's way to get under a person's skin. He didn't get under my skin. He might have thought he got under my skin, but he didn't. Joking is all it really is. I realize that kind of joking bothers a person. It didn't bother me by a long shot. You kind of got red in the face. What? You kind of squirmed in your chair when he was talking. Who wouldn't squirm around in their chair listening to such ignorant bunk? Who wouldn't? Please, Vic. Rush. The fat head. It's just Fred's way. Just his way. Some way, I'll say. I know he's stubborn and loud talking, but he's a wonderful husband to Ruthie and such a good provider and sends money to his folks and just as soon give you the shirt off his back. I don't want the shirt off his back. I wouldn't have the shirt off his back. And I tell you this. Sadie, I've been in that guy's house for the last time. The last time. I bet if he had any idea you felt this way about it, he'd just more and apologize. I bet he'd come over here a chitin, saying how sorry he is. If he comes over here a chitin, I'd send him right back again a chitin. Listen, were we or were we not guests at his home tonight? Of course we were guests over there in his home tonight. And that's why I say... No, let me say a minute. Long as we're gonna lay in bed till morning talking, we were guests over tonight. We were invited over there to play a sociable game of cards. What did our courageous host do? He lit right in and told his guest his business and was just so much hooey. He spent 20 minutes laughing about his guests. No, he didn't, Vic. He, he didn't? He didn't. Fred Stembottom didn't sit there at the card table with that big, wide, dumb half-grin on his face and snort over how funny my job down at the plant. Vic, please. You're talking terrible loud. Rush has got to have his sleep. Okay. I didn't ask to discuss this. You're the one that wanted to have a pleasant chat in the middle of the night. Couldn't you just bring your voice down a little? Yeah, I'll bring my voice down to nothing. I need sleep myself. I bid you good night. Fred didn't laugh at your job, Vic. Oh, he didn't, huh? <laughs> Where were you? In Canada? He sat there with that monkey face grin and went on for 20 minutes about how the kitchenware industry, uh, uh, how do they get men to go in kitchenware, Vic? Do they pick them out in insane asylums or do they stunt the brain of newborn babies? 
He just meant that to be funny. Did you think it was funny? No, but... I should think it'd burn you up to hear cheap cracks like that about your husband's work. I didn't think it was very smart of Fred to go on like that. But just the same, I realized that he was... We make our living out of kitchenware. The food we eat comes from kitchenware. Our money in the bank comes from kitchenware. I've spent going on 20 years of my life in kitchenware. All the future I got is in kitchenware. No. I don't think it was very smart of Fred to go on like that. But just the same. I and who the heck is Fred Stembottom? Nothing but a rotten little thirsty two dollar a week clerk that only hangs on to his job because his bosses are too kind hearted to Vic. Oh, I wouldn't tell that to him. I wouldn't tell it to nobody. But what if I had said things like that tonight? He did to me. Only fooling, though. Only fooling. <laughs> only fooling. Well, he was only fooling. I know Fred's a little stupid when it comes to a lot of things, but I know, as sure as there's a man in the moon, that he wouldn't set out to hurt any. What surprises me, Sadie, is that you didn't get mad yourself. That's what surprises me. I did get a little mad. <laughs> Certainly acted it. You and Ruthie both sat there and giggled while Fred was hitting up the two-bit comedy. Laughed out loud when he called me the prince of pots and pans and the sweetheart of the frying skittle. I laughed because... Never mind. Never mind. It's okay. It won't happen again. I've been to Fred Stenbottom's house for the last time and you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now let's go to sleep. Must be going on one o'clock. Vic, don't get mad, but... I'm not mad. Don't you... Can't you kind of see where... Don't get mad now at what I have to say. Will you? I'm not mad. Can I kind of see what? Can't you see where you were a little bit to blame tonight? How? Fred didn't start his Josh until, until after you gave him a little joshing. Did I run down his job? Did I make fun of the way he makes a living? Did I poke him in the spot that it hurts the worst? No, but... But what? You kind of went after his goat early in the evening there. When? Well, remember when Ruthie served the ice cream? I do. Do you remember what was being said? I complimented Ruthie on her ice cream, stated it was delicious, announced it was my favorite flavor, and in every way behaved like a guest is supposed to behave. Do you remember... I may not get this exactly right, but... Do you remember saying you liked ice cream served in round chunks like baseballs? I do. And then you recollect what Fred said. Something insulting, I imagine. What did he say? He said, speaking of baseball, it wouldn't be long now before... Izzy Bean, is it? Dizzy Dean. He said, speaking of baseball, it wouldn't be long now before Dizzy Dean would be fanning out National League batters like stick flies. I recall the remark. Mm -hmm. And then you said... Dizzy Dean was just so much wet gunpowder and ought to be plowing corn down on the farm. Sure. That's right. Dizzy Dean's a flash in the pan. That got under Fred's skin. What did? The things you said about Dizzy Dean. He thinks Dizzy Dean is marvelous. Keeps a scrapbook about him and everything. Listens to the radio. Thinks the sun rises and sets on Dizzy Dean. That's another example of Fred's stupidity. But you were tromping on his toes with the things you said. Good. Tromping on him. Good and hard. I saw his neck get red as fire one time there was when you said you'd rather have one pitcher from the Bush League than all the Dizzy Deans in the world. I was telling the truth. I would. But it made Fred mad. Excellent. 
and you went right ahead making him mad. You were talking about his car. Said you bet him three to one. The transmission wouldn't hold up 500 miles. And it won't. I was stating fact. Everybody knows that make of automobile is so much junk. But after all, it's his car. He paid good money for it. He's as proud of it as Adam. Goes over it with a damp cloth every night of the universe. If he was smarter, he'd drive it into a sugar creek. But don't you see, Vic? See what? He didn't make you any madder than you made him. It was just one thing leading to another. Till finally, he got on the subject of kitchenware. Well, he won't get on the subject of kitchenware anymore. Not with me. I'm through with that fat head. But won't you admit, you were partly to blame for what happened. It's getting on for morning. Let's get some sleep. All right. Good night. Good night. Vic? I'm asleep. It's Ruthie I'm thinking of. What about her? It's just that she's my best friend. Well? I wouldn't want to lose her for anything. You don't have to lose her. When you and Fred have these flare-ups, naturally, the wife sticks to her husband. I noticed tonight. I was peeved when Fred was laughing at your work, and Ruthie was peeved when you were making fun of Fred's baseball players and his auto. We couldn't help it. We tried to, but was bound to show a little. Like I said, Ruthie's my best friend. My very best friend. I'm with... Other ladies a lot, yes. Miss Donahue and Miss Harris and Miss Brighton and Miss Applerod. But it's not the same. Maybe it's because they're a little older than I am. Maybe it's because they're a little brighter in the head and got more education. I don't know what it is. But I'm not the same with them as I am with Ruthie. With Ruthie, I can laugh and cry, fight, talk, nonsense, and just get along marvelous. With other ladies, I, I sort of feel like, here I am, a woman that ain't a girl any longer and got a 14-year-old boy. You see? Um. Ruthie and I get along a lot like kids get along. It's hard for married ladies with families to have close friends where you can just take your hair down. And Ruthie's the only close friend I got. The only one I... Ever will have, probably. Because I'm getting along to an age where women don't make close friends. You awake? Yeah, I'm listening. You, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't you think, if you tried, don't you think you and Fred could hit it off better? I guess so. You mean it? Sure. Fred ain't beyond redemption. Not a bad egg at all, if you don't take him serious. Would it... would it be alright if... <laughs> would it be alright if what? If I asked him over tomorrow night for more cards? Fred and Ruthie? Yes. Sure. You're not just talking? Nah, go ahead. Ask him over. Thanks, Vic. Don't you think we ought to settle down and get some sleep? Yes. Good. Good night. Good night, Vic. Oh.